the symbolism of windows and doors. In our video on reality, we explained that our mind manufactures what we perceive. In much the same way, the hardware and software of a computer presents you with a screen. Thus, we live a form of virtual reality, or immersive reality, created for us by our sensory systems to suit the fact we are human beings. A little dog, with its extraordinary sense of smell and eyesight adapted to moving objects rather than colour, perceives things entirely differently to us. Furthermore, they can see things we can't, as is clear if you own a dog that spends its entire time staring at or obeying things that don't even exist as far as you are concerned. So if we use this picture, used to test for colour blindness to demonstrate what we mean, maybe we are seeing none of the atoms with a U that make up the numbers in these circles, but other creatures can. And instead of five circles, our perception system combines them all together to produce a composite picture, all the while smoothing out the picture and filling in the missing bits until we get a picture we as humans can use. And depending on what sort of thing we are, even maybe who we are individually, we all perceive things differently. My red may not be your red. But mystics can open the door to reality, and all you need is your name. The Garden of Mystery, the Gulsham Iraz of Mahmud Shabistari. All beings have secured existence through a name. By that name, they perpetually worship the real. In origin, each being arises from that source. On returning, that name is like a door. By the door through which it arrived, it will return. Doors St. Augustine There is a heavenly door for the soul into the divine nature, where some things are reduced to nothing. The dividing portal or barrier between the spiritual world, reality, and the physical world, immersive virtual reality, is thus represented as a door. This is William Blake's door of perception. William Blake, the marriage of heaven and hell. If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. For man has closed himself up till he sees all things through narrow chinks of his cavern. Subsequently, this phrase was also used by Aldous Huxley as the title to his book. Windows Whereas a door represents a portal through which you can leave this realm of immersive virtual reality, to reality itself. A window represents the means by which you may get a glimpse of reality. By hallucinations, visions, or out-of-body experiences. But to do so, you do not use your physical eyes. The physical eyes may be better viewed as the window to your soul looking in.
but to get a clear view of reality, you use your mind's eye, a different window altogether. The Everlasting Gospel William Blake This life's dim windows of the soul distorts the heaven from pole to pole and leads you to believe a lie when you see with, not through, the eye. Going through the door So we can symbolically see reality via windows and enter it via doors. How? Our video on activities describes how you can navigate our site to find a method that works for you. And we also have a video on our web portals and one portal gives you instructions on how to find out what suits you best. But here is Willie Seabrook with one of the ways he used. William Seabrook using the I Ching To send your soul into the infinite you shake and toss your tortoise shells like polka dice then arrange the ones parallel and fix the resulting hexagram firmly in your visual memory. Next you must visualize an imaginary closed door with this symbol painted on it. All you know about the imaginary door is that if it swings open at all it will open away from you as if pushed. Next you sit quietly like a Buddha. You try to make your mind a blank simply staring in imagination at the door and at the symbol. You do it either in the dark or blindfolded or simply with your eyes closed if you have the willpower to keep them closed for what may be a long time. After a while, maybe in a half hour, maybe in seven or eight hours, maybe not at all, in any single given trial, the door will seem to swing slowly open. Then, in your imagination, you go through it. You don't merely look through it, you go through it. You arise out of your body, as the book says, and walk through the door. What you see, encounter and experience on the other side is believed by the esoteric to be seen by the soul's eye, to be experienced by the astral body. Whatever bell it rings, it rings it. Some of the university professors were amiably interested in our experiments and I shall never forget the night when Maurice Bishop of Cornell went through the door to become a monk in the old abbey of Salem and chanted pure Gregorian in the old Latin. It was no proof of reincarnation because he was a Latin scholar and had sung Gregorian plain chart long before he started writing limericks after Lear. My own unhappy adventures beyond the door consisted always in seeking something I could never find and were consequently not worth mentioning. What happened to various others beyond the door was often dull, but sometimes astonishing and not always entirely respectable. There was one memorable night when a chubby professor of Greek from Colombia, who in his state of normal consciousness disbelieves in one sort of fairies and heartily dislikes the other sort, became a wanton young female corybant. Some trivia to end with. At its heart, the genetic code is the set of rules that a cell uses to interpret the nucleotide sequence within a molecule of mRNA. This sequence is broken into a series of three 
nucleotide units known as codons. The three-letter nature of codons means that the four nucleotides found in mRNA, A, U, G and C can produce a total of 64 different combinations.